Hi, Tom Walls, Carbide Processors. Um, today is devoted to running some special parts, special batch to help out a customer who really needs them. There's time steps, so in between I have time to get caught up on some of these videos. I want to talk about recycling coolant, water-based coolants especially. First, federal law, and if you really want to I can look it up and cite it cite the reference, but federal law states that anything held for recycling is not hazardous material, okay, by definition. Now, I'm going to talk about the law a little bit. I'm not a lawyer. For God's sakes, double check everything I tell you that's legal, but I did go back and took a class, actually a, several classes to get a certificate in environmental management from the University of Washington in Seattle. One of the things they taught us was that laws are made by legislators who don't know anything about what they're legislating. Um, a lot of the chemicals listed in federal law, the names are wrong. Just not very much wrong, but the names are wrong, for example, which won't protect you a bit. But anyway, never, never, never tell somebody it's hazardous waste. If you have to keep it in barrels waiting for a recycler, put a label on it saying used coolant held for recycling. Okay? If anybody asks you what it is, say, hey, it's used coolant held for recycling. They say what's in it. Show them the MSDS. If they ask you about anything else, say, hey, we cut steel, we cut aluminum, whatever. Don't, don't commit yourself. Don't say you don't know whether it's hazardous or not because then you get in some expensive testing. The next step, do not pay to have water hauled away to a recycler. If you're using a water-based coolant, it should be about 90-95% water. Evaporate out that water. Um, Granger has two solutions. One is, I think they call them barrel bands. They're like a big belt, big heating belts that go around a 55 gallon drum and evaporate out the water or you can put big heating elements into it and boil the water off if you want to get rid of it faster. The belts are much more popular. Third way I saw online, take a 55 gallon drum and slice it in half like you were building a barbecue. This is in a place with a lot of sun. Doesn't work well in Washington State. But then you put a piece of plexiglass about two inches above the lip of the barrel the sun shines down like it does through a car window. Um, it changes the wavelength as it goes through the plexiglass, so it generates a lot more heat. That will evaporate the water out of the coolant, which comes out through the sides. You probably want to put a drum in the bottom of the barrel so you can drain out the sludge. But I think that's pretty slick. It just uses, um, uses solar power, which just talked to a guy down in California, Southern California. Work, it'll work really well for him. And then I would contact Safety Clean. I would look in the yellow pages or go online or online yellow pages and see who recycles coolant. I would also contact, now in Tacoma, it's our sewer utilities. They don't want this stuff dumped down the sewer. In the state of Washington, it is the Department of Ecology, which may or may not be some help. I would make a couple of calls, and typically they have a list of people who do this sort of thing uh, and then you can get quotes from them and remember what you're going to do you're going to pay by the weight or the volume which are about the same thing whatever you haul away so if you evaporate about 90 95 percent of the water out of it you're going to save yourself a huge amount of money and just have the stuff hauled away now in the state of Washington you can pour, you're going to want to check, and this is a case-by-case -case basis, and it depends on the county, on the city, on the state, on the municipality, on who knows what, but it is quite possible to use used grinding coolant or used machining coolant, mix it with sawdust in a big cogeneration plant. A local machine shop evaporates out the water and then they use the tramp oils and whatnot to feed their to feed their oil heater that they use to warm the shop in the winter. 
Uh, both good uses if you have any use for it at all or if you know anybody locally. Uh, might not be a bad deal to evaporate the water, put a couple 55-gallon drums in the back of the company pickup and see if your neighbor or somebody that runs a good generation plant can use them. Uh, don't try and get tricky on this. Don't try and sneak anything really hazardous in it. Everybody knows about those dodges. And of course the big thing is to buy one of our filter units. We routinely take people from changing their coolant every 30 days to once a year, once every two years. Uh, best test we ever ran was with a really good engineer, a company that makes dental burrs, biggest in the US, and they should be, they're really good. But we did some coolant analyses before they bought the filter units. We worked with them to develop a couple of different kinds of filter units. They were changing their coolant every 30 days. The last test they ran, they were still running the same coolant after two years. So huge savings in filtering the coolant. We have the least expensive, most effective, certainly most effective for the price filter unit that anyone anywhere has. So you're looking at seven, eight hundred bucks to remove 98, 99 percent of the particles versus 15,000 to remove all the particles. Um, if nothing else, put one of ours on machines and then stretch out the time between having the guys come in with the big machine to recycle it all. So, well, that's more than enough. I'm going to go back and see how the customers' parts are doing. Have a good evening. Bye.